Under the sea. Under the sea. Darling, it's better. Not anymore. Down where it's cheddar? What's poor and thirsty thoughts? <laughs> As you can see, I am wholly unbothered by any kind of formal wear today. I am rocking kind of the same shit that my girls are rocking because our salted, bloated asses aren't fitting into any ball gowns today. We're just kind of in our lounge wear, just chilling, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. You take off your tight, sweaty, awful work clothes, put on some lounge wear, and pour yourself a glass of hot weather hooch because don't these ladies look so relaxed and unbothered by lactose intolerance? Yeah, no. I'm always bothered by lactose intolerance. I'm literally the most lactose tolerant person you've ever met in your life. I'm gonna hold your hand through one of my favorite things, which is talking about all of the families of cheese. And yeah, it's a little bit of a dysfunctional family, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. Joining me are the princesses of the comfy Disney series from Wreck-It Ralph. These are rock candies, which is kind of an offshoot of Funko Pops, but without those little fucking eyes, those beady little eyes that get me so bad. These ladies are an incredible set and it hurts my heart so much that they didn't finish the set. They never did a Cinderella. I mean, I got, I got, I heard. I have this one. I have this shitty little doll, but we we, we know that's not the same thing. Um, as a full beautiful collection, I also realize I don't have Pocahontas. I don't have Snow White or Sleeping Beauty or Pocahontas. Bully me in the comments over an incomplete collection or send me one. Cut the fucking middleman out. Just send it to me. Cheese is complicated. It is sick hella science, but it's also an art. So, for thousands of years, we've just been slapping laymanless labels on this paste to try to get a feel for what cheese is to the everyday person. All it did was streamline the confusion and fix the confusion for some of us. But, that's not useful. That's not fucking useful. Who the fuck wants to just have a chemistry degree just to enjoy something that someone else made with their own hands? I don't. I don't, I don't want a chemistry degree. No, I don't want to go back and get a chemistry degree. No more chemistry cl classes. You don't need that to start enjoying the ooh, 1800 different types of cheese out there. No, you start with me. Sugoi Supergirl is the smart way to start. So for this HM, I've got nine families of cheeses, nine lit princesses, and three types of alcohol that go great with cheese. And I'm ready to fucking party. My first category, fresh cheeses, and the little subfamily, runny cheeses. I wish there was a better way to say that. <laughs> there isn't, they are runny cheeses, that is what they are. I didn't write it. I think I'm gonna pour, to talk about these cheeses, I think I'm gonna pour a catch-all wine. Um, everybody, fuck, everybody who knows anything about anything knows everybody loves cheese with wine. Now, that's not exactly wrong. Um, Let's talk about this Jazz Odyssey real quick. This is a 2020 uh, Teutonic Vineyards wine. And oh boy, is it a blend of Riesling and Gewürz Chenin. If you haven't tried an off dry wine, which is a wine with just a little bit of sugar in it with some really awful cheeses, mm, oh yeah, that's phenomenal. That is absolutely perfect for a cheese board. It's got a little bit of that peach, a little bit of that stone fruit, a little honeycomb wax, a little bit of they love that word petrol. Personally, I'm not always aware of what it means. I guess it more means the mouthfeel of it, but fucking science, okay? This wine is amazing. It's pretty affordable. And as you can see, it's kind of a trendier style of a new natural wine. Um, I, I, would, I would hesitate to say that this shit should go on the front of every cheese book ever. If you can't get your hands on one of those like really good hoity-toity, dry Rieslings from a really nice part of Mosul. This is what you drink. This shit is so good. It is amazing and they're a rock star company. I absolutely love them. Ooh, fuck, that's fresh. Mm, phenomenal. Okay, wine and cheese, a match made in heaven and I'd be willing to bet that they drink in heaven. Cause if they don't, what the fuck did I die for?
you've all eaten fresh cheese. Let's get back to it. In some form or another, whether you've spread borsin on a piece of cold toast with smoked salmon, or decimated half of a turtle cheesecake at 3 a.m., or, I don't know, tried to, I don't know, save face at a holiday Christmas party by politely declining Sharon's cannoli dip, then going back to the dessert table after about four buffalo traces and dragging a fucking baguette through that ricotta, sweet, sweet ricotta. Fresh cheese is just cheese that hasn't been aged and is still dripping with moisture. What, is that not a good way to put it? Okay. Still has enough water content to be conducive to baking and super good at putting out spice fires in your mouth. Pretty much pleasant to infants. It's kind of what people start their babies on in a lot of countries and pretty awesome for adults who just cannot with mayo. Spread that shit on a roast beef sandwich, put a little horseradish on it and you got it. You're eating cheese, baby. Wines typically go well with cheese because is a perfect marriage of textures, flavors, and pretty much esters, oxidative flavors. You've got a little bit of like some grow together, go together situations going on, like a lot of French cheeses and French wine. They just taste similar and they work that way. But you can also do it the hard way. More on that HM later. Subscribe if you wanna be a fucking smart eating nerd. Next up, I'm gonna move him over here. Continue to enjoy this excellent, mm, excellent Willamette Valley, Oregon blend. We're gonna go ahead and move on to soft ripened cheeses. Now these are the soft ripened cheeses with natty rinds. I know y'all have seen these adorable little fuckers in the windows of like a French village scape, all cute and wrinkly and gray. You just didn't know how to approach the little fuckers. Why would you? They started out in Europe and they kind of made their way over here. They're still not as prevalent as I'd like them to be. Oh my God, they are delicious. They are so good. Goat cheeses are the stars of this category. So you're thinking of really textural differences in between the different kinds of aging. You're thinking of tangy, tart, lemony, a little bit of chalky. Sometimes they can be really spreadable and sometimes they can age to the point where they just ooze out everywhere. Oh my God, it's so good. Lots of barnyardy kind of some woodsy flavors. Sometimes they're covered in like vegetable or wood ash. That's what gives them that really pretty kind of like wrinkly gray appearance. Uh, sometimes they're served in single portions. They have these cute little molds that a lot of French winemakers like to see. But you know what they always are? Unique and delicate. And aging these cheeses takes them on Mr. Toad's wild ride. As you can see, that's why I've got my little bell here because it's famous in France for stuff like Bijot and Valencay and all that fun stuff. On to Bloomy Rinds! Oh, I love this category so much. With the Bloomy Rinds, yes, I have Jasmine because she marches to the beat of her own drum. They all do. They're all unique. Every girl is special. I have something kind of crazy for you today. It's morphin' time! See this shit? I've got three words for you. Brie, Brie, Brie. I know that was a crime against humanity. I did it for the views. These famous wheels are everywhere. They're pretty much ubiquitous. You've seen them. We've all seen them. We all know what they look like. They've got the white rinds. They're in the little wheels. They're in the nice part of the grocery store. And I got one right here to showcase for you by a small woman owned dairy called the Goat Lady Dairies. And this shit is going to blow your mind. This is called Snow Camp. It is, like I said, one of those bloomy rinds. And you can tell that this wasn't industrially made. One of the reasons is that the rind isn't totally white. Now, if you go to the store and get one that's totally white, that's fine. Just be prepared for it not to have the flavors that you want from these fucking awesome cheeses. This, that little bit of modeling, that little bit of brown and gray and some, I don't know, blues, that means real natural bacteria, or at least local, or you could even say indigenous bacteria, had a little bit of a hand in this. So you're gonna have a cheese that has been handled a little bit more intimately. I didn't like how I put that. Intimately? Uh, mm -mm. No, thank you, no, thank you. So most of these cheeses come from France. However, you would be blind not to realize that the U.S. is killing the Bloomy Rhine cheese game right now. I mean, what am I holding right here? Am I holding a wheel of uh, Brie de Mew or fucking Saint Andre? No, I'm holding a goat 
Brie, made by a couple of fucking rockin' independent ladies. So this is my favorite part of opening a cheese, is the rind being cut into. See that beautiful creamy paste in there with a little bit of bacteria activity? Oh boy, Bill Nye would be so proud of me right now. So proud of me. They've got this creamy mouthfeel to them that just makes you want to melt into a mink pillow. That's all I can describe the texture of some of these more aged cheeses. Now, younger styles have a dense chalky center. You've probably seen them in that last photo with the uh, soft ripened goat cheeses. They have this nice chalky center, but once you let them age, oh my God, it oozes into goo mode and you just get this unreal pure milk and science experiment. Like I was saying about this bacteria on the outside. This is the bestest bacteria. This bacteria is your biffle. Is your B-F-F. This stuff is good for your stomach. It's the good for your stomach grade shit. And a lot of the times if you have a raw milk instead of a pasteurized milk, I know the FDA, I know the FDA fucking hates raw milk imported from other countries. Raw milk cheeses are my favorite kind of cheeses because you are not getting the industrial mass produced flat line cheese flavor. A lot of the pasteurized ones can be really cool too. Cheese. You're, with a raw cheese, you're getting the ground. What more can I say? You're getting something that nature made and that humans helped. So it just tastes better and it feels more supple and it, it just feels like you're eating something that's better for you. But I digress. If you have a sensory disorder and you can't eat these cheeses, I'll give you a bit of a pass. For everything else, there's MasterCard. No, that's not right. We didn't fight our way up the evolutionary pole so that we could be safe when eating something that someone has spent their whole lives studying. So, grow up. Grow the fuck up and try some new stuff. If you really hate it, then I can't do anything else for you at that point. This is, going, this is about to get stinky. I This is not stinky enough for me. I need to... We're gonna... We're gonna try change it up a little bit. Like an absolute madman, we're gonna change it up a little bit. I'm about to drop the Sar Bomba of drinking and pairing knowledge on y'all right now. Sake? Fight me? They pair with cheeses a lot better than wine. In a lot of instances. I know what you're saying. Look at that gorgeous Ginjo color. What the literal fuck are you talking about? No, 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 no. There is absolutely no way. I'm gonna open up this KID Heiwa Shuzo because I am the god of my own culinary universe and I will be damned if some fucking European is gonna tell me that their shitty rotten grape juice is better than this beautiful blend, this beautiful brew of rice from Japan. Lactic acids and aminos, bitch! That's my neat science fact for you guys today. That's the reason that it pairs so well with cheeses. Lots of lactic acid in sake, lots of amino acids in sake. Umami, cheese. Less acid, a little bit easier to pair with your veggies. Just saying. Now go get you a couple of one cup sakes and be the shogun of the fucking cheese counter over at Kroger. <laughs> oh, good one, Sugoi Supergirl. Toy Boy here. You know, we've had a lot of fun today. Too much for one video. So, we're gonna split this one up into two. Stay tuned, folks.